I feel like I can be good at bringing that magic out of the robot. I'm one of those people that needs unconditional support for difficult things. I just feel like social integration of robots in society will create a really interesting world. The, the most of the difficult struggles that I'm still going through is that I haven't launched the company that I want to launch and the, the company has to do with AI, I mean, it's a, maybe a longer conversation, but the ultimate dream is to put robots in every home. It's a non-trivial explanation why that leads to robots in the home, but it's basically the algorithms that fuel effective social robotics. So robots that you can form a deep connection with. And so I've been really, yeah, I've been building prototypes, but struggling that I don't have, if I were to be critical, the guts to, to launch a company. The thing is, as many people know, when you fill your day and you're busy, that busyness becomes an excuse that you use against doing the things that scare you. A lot of people use family in this way. You know, uh, my wife, my kids, I can't. When in reality, some of the most successful people have a wife and have kids and have families and they still do it. And so a lot of times we can fill the day with busy work, but all of that can just serve as an excuse from the thing that my heart says is the right thing to do. And uh, that's why I don't have the guts, the guts to say no to basically everything and then to focus all out. Because part of it is I'm unlikely to fail at anything in my life currently, because I've already found a comfortable place. With uh, with a startup, it's mostly going to be most likely going to be a failure, if not an embarrassing failure. I think a lot of startup founders would literally murder for 85% chance of success. I think, I think, um, given all the opportunities I have, the the skill set, the the funding, all that kind of stuff, my chances are relatively high for success. But what relatively high means in the startup world is still far, far below 85. It's we are talking about single digit percentages. Most startups fail. And a lot of that, the people that surround you, I mean, people are really important. And I don't have people around me that say you should do a startup. It's very difficult to find such people. I'm one of those people that needs unconditional support for difficult things. Like I know myself coaching wise, like if I say I want to win the gold medal at the Olympics in freestyle wrestling, I want a coach that doesn't blink once and hears me and believes that I can do it and then is viciously intense and cruel to me on the on on that pursuit. Like if you want to do this, let's do this. All right? So but that's support. That like that positivity, I don't I'm never um uh, you know, I'm not energized nor do I see that as love a person saying like basically criticizing that, like t saying like, you're, uh, you're too old to win the Olympic gold medal, right? You're like all the things you can come up with. That's not helpful to me. And I can't find a dopamine or I haven't yet a dopamine source from the, the haters. Like basically people that are criticizing you sort of trying to prove them wrong. I j it doesn't, um, it never got me off. He's, there's always like an enemy and he's going against that enemy. I mean, I wish, maybe that's something, I mean, it's really interesting. Maybe you can remap it this way so, so that you can construct, like that's a kind of obvious mechanism. Construct an amorphous blob that is a hater that wants you to fail, right? That's kind of the David Goggins thing. You're in that, 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 that blob says you're too weak. Mm -hmm. You're too dumb. You're, you're too old, you're too fat, you're too whatever, and getting you to want to quit and so on. And then you start getting angry at that blob and maybe that's a good motivator. I haven't personally really tried that because it's a really tough process. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 I mean, to whatever degree you can extract happiness from struggle, yes, maybe, but I don't see it. I, I think I'll have some very, very low points. There's a lot of people who, who found, find companies found companies know about. And I also want to be in a relationship. I want to get married. I just think that it's easy to have a relationship when everything is good. The relationships that become strong and are tested quickly are the ones when, when shit is going down. 
when I see a robot, when I first interacted with robots and it became even stronger, the most sophisticated the robots I interacted with, I see a magic there. And you're like, you look around, does anyone else see this magic? Like, it's, it's kind of like maybe when you fall in love, like that, that feeling like, does, does anyone else notice this person that just walked in the room? I feel that way about robots and I, I can el elaborate what that means, but I'm not even sure I can convert it into words. I just feel like social integration of robots in society will create a really interesting world. And uh, our ability to anthropomorphize when we look at a robot and our ability to feel things when we look at a robot is something that most of us don't yet experience, but I think everybody will experience in the next few decades. And I, I just want to be uh, a part of that ex of exploring that because it hasn't been really thoroughly ex explored. The best roboticists in the world are not currently working on that problem at all. They they try to avoid human beings completely, and th nobody's really working on that problem in terms of when you look at the numbers. All the big tech companies that are investing money sometimes you just notice the thing. Not not only do I notice the magic, there's a gut feeling, which I try not to speak to because there's no track record but I feel like I can be good at bringing that magic out of the robot and there's no data that says I would be good at that <laughs> but there's a feeling it's just a feeling and I just always thought um, I think it had a different when I before I knew robots existed before AI existed the, the form was um, more about the magic between humans the like, I, I think of it as love, but like the smile the two friends have towards each other when I was really young and people would be excited when they first know each other and see, notice each other. And there's the, that moment that they share that feeling together. I, I was like, wow, that's really interesting. It is, it is really interesting that these two separate intelligent organisms are able to connect all of a sudden on this deep emotional level. It's like, huh. It's, it's, a, it's just beautiful to see. And I noticed the magic of that. And then when I started uh, programming, programming period, but then programming AI systems, you realize, oh, that could be, that's not just between humans and humans, that could be humans and other entities. For some reason, it hit me the most intensely when I saw robots. And so yeah, it's, it's like a calling. But it's a calling that I, I can just enjoy the vision of it the vision of a future world, of an exciting future world that's full of cool stuff, or I can be part of building that. And part, being part of building that means doing the hard work of capitalism which, and then hiring a lot of people that will define the trajectory of not only your company, but your whole existence as a human being and, and building it up, not failing them because now they all depend on you and not failing the world with an opportunity to bring something, something that brings joy to people. And like all that pressure, just nonstop fires that you have to put out, the drama, the... So now you have to understand not only the cybersecurity of data and the privacy, how to maintain privacy correctly with data, but also the psychology of people trusting you with their data.